What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? A podcast about life in the music industry. Oh, Billy, you made it right at the beginning. Look at that. Yo, what's up, guys? Sorry. I'm <laughs> dealing with some uh, power outage issues. Because <laughs> it's hot, I hear. Oh, it's very toasty, but it's also kind of stormy by me. And, like, uh, I've timed, like, picking up some food for my, like, my little brother and all the stuff. Is, there's no power, and it kind of fucked all my shit up, so. Well, you did it. You're here. You made it yeah. right at the intro. So good job. Oh, good shit. Hell yeah. We allow- we're allowed to curse on this show. You sure are. Okay, cool. You oh, sure are uh, there, but respectfully, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, going back into the intro, I'm your host Patrick Tarnowski. Matt Reed is not with us tonight. Um, he's hanging out with his his dog who just had surgery, so he's taking care of the pooch. I understand. Uh, but that's what we're I understand. The Today. We've got New Jersey band Sucker Punch on the show. Friends, how's it going? Going great. Thanks for having us. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, what? Because we are, so I'm in Minnesota, as the other guys know. We're having the opposite of a heat wave. It is like 55 degrees here. How hot is it there? In the 90s. But it's like the highest amount of humidity you can imagine. So it's just like sweaty and sticky. Yeah. We yeah. We did have that. We hit like Duluth hit the hundreds earlier this week, and that's super abnormal. Like it yeah, was yeah. it was oh, miserable. Shit. Yeah, we don't yeah. it doesn't get that hot up here. Maybe like a couple days a year. Yeah, I, I live in Virginia Beach and it's it, it, I think it was 103 today. It was it was oh, crazy. Shit. Yeah, it's hot. And uh, as most old people will say, I even saw this on a TikTok, and I thought it was really funny. But it's it's not the heat that'll get you; it's the humidity. It's the humidity. Yeah, yeah. it's and true though. It is it's true. so sticky. I've been because like I've been to Arizona, I've been to Vegas, and it's been like 110 degrees, oh, and yeah. it feels like it's like a New Jersey 90. Yeah. Like it's really not that bad. But then in New Jersey 90 with humidity, I want to freaking die. And I can't even sleep in the same bed as my wife because I'm too freaking hot. Yeah, it's awful. It's humidity is like It gets super humid up here. That's like what our heat is. But I mean, I've done like I've been to uh, like warp Tour and stuff in the uh, in Phoenix. And it was like 112 degrees. And, there, you know, it's hot. But yeah. Oh, yeah. you're still at warp Tour. Like it's not going to stop you. It's hot. Okay. If you haven't been this close to a heat stroke at a warp tour, did you like really even go to warp tour? Did you really warp tour? You know. <laughs> true. That's Damn true. Right. Cool. Well, let's start. Mm-hmm. Uh let's go with Happy. my question. My first question. I also have my computer next to me so I can see my stuff. So it's like <laughs> I have the worst setup ever today. It's awesome. But on that. You guys just released your new single, Worst Case in Ontario, in August. Uh, tell us a little bit about the song. Uh, yeah, so the song uh, for me was kind of like a uh, self-imposed writing challenge to write about like a movie and kind of leave it open enough to where like people can relate to it in other ways. So we wrote about, or I wrote about the movie Jennifer's Body. I don't know if you ever seen yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's basically it's okay. from... Oh, good <laughs> shit. He's got it. Oh, yeah. It's a great movie. <laughs> but uh, it's from the POV of, like, uh, uh, a poor boy getting lured to his death. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, but one who's been left like, apart emotionally is uh, probably right, you know? Yeah. I mean, you cut out a bit there, but... <laughs> ah, shit. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the road, if you can't see. But um, yeah, what, what parts did you did you hear? Um, mostly, you know, that it was about Jennifer's body. <laughs> oh, I mean, all right, it's, it's yeah, like it's, that's pretty much. I mean, yeah, that is pretty much what it is. It's, it's like, like a, you know, a, from a victim, a hypothetical victim from that universe being lured okay. in, and um, uh, for me, it was at I so I I never really was a was a fan of the movie. I think I saw it when it first came out. I didn't I, yeah. I was like. I don't know how I'm going to relate anything to this song, but I guess it's kind of just like, 
you some when you when you go after something that you don't like and not even just like relationships or sex or anything like that you go after something that you know maybe you shouldn't you don't know if you should do this but you mm-hmm. do and you know then you end up paying for it so i think everybody's kind of got that you know little bit of sin in them where they want to they want to do the bad thing and they want to you know be lured by that siren song you know what i mean absolutely and then it blows up in their face kind of stuff yep and Billy's a Billy's a big fan of Low Shoulder. Low Shoulder, yeah, Low Shoulder. The band in that movie is actually pretty good. They're pretty solid, right? <laughs> I mean that that movie rules, though. It's I think that's a great movie. Like it's it's good. It's good. Oh, it's, I re- it's, it's fun. Good. You kind of yeah, it's fun. You kind of have to go into it knowing it's a little corny, you know. And then it's like, okay, this is so much better than that. Oh yeah, I mean it's definitely okay. corny. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's a it's it's just a fun movie like you you got to go into it wanting to have fun for sure oh of course you can't, yeah can't be expecting a, like a quentin tarantino or some shit you know right what made you want to write a song kind of like based around a concept of a movie uh i mean not that like you know writing sad boy songs are like trivial or anything i just wanted to do something a little fun and a little different i kind of I don't know. I'm over some of the sad boy shit. You know, I just don't want, don't want to be like super depressy all the time. I just wanted to do something fun and creative right. and challenging. And I was like, all right, let's 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 fucking do it. And we did it, and I think it came out great. Hell yeah, that was a great jam. No, thank you. I oh, yeah. appreciate it. Absolutely. So you guys are going to be releasing your new EP, Better Pleasures, later on this year. What what can Sucker Punch fans? or new Sucker Punch listeners expect from this new EP? I think it's uh, I think it's a bit edgier than, than a lot of our, our past stuff. We, we wanted to go with a little heavier uh, feel to it, but without, you know, going too far from our actual, you know, our, our what we feel is our sound now. I think right. it took us a while to really find it, but I think this EP is really like a, just a statement for us as a band. Um, just like this is our sound this is us this is sucker punch like we've arrived here we're here and uh it's got a lot of fun you know interactive parts in it that i think people are really going to dig for the live show uh it's it's just fun you know it's, it's a fun little little ep couple couple softer ones a couple heavier ones so you know i'm excited about it yeah, uh, yeah. uh yeah bridging off of yeah what chris said like we kind of pulled from different influences um i guess you know further you know, than we did for our, our last CP. And um, uh, we have a, a song that was in the break was inspired by a Billy. What's that band? Um, heavy, heavy, low, low. Okay. Yeah. They're kind of like a, like a crazier, you know, hardcore kind of, kind of thing from like 2007, I believe the record came out. Um, yeah. And it was one of my all time favorites. And uh, it kind of, it's one of those moments that we're like in the studio and like the song wasn't totally put together, but like I, I had something like forming in my head. And then the, the moment struck, I was like, let's try this. And uh, it, it was just like, I don't know. It's, I wish I could like capture that feeling in, in a bottle and like give it to people. It's just like, fuck, this is like crazy and fun. And yeah. it sounds I remember, great. I remember that like we were all in the studio and like all of us were just like, that's it. Like, you know, it just like you kind of all connect at the same time. And we all just kind of like lit up and we're like, yeah, that that's it right there. So um, that that's going to. We're excited to, you know, hear the reactions of of people, and you know, hopefully they dig it just as much as uh, as much as we do. Hell yeah! When is uh, when are you going to be releasing the EP? Um, which, uh, when is when is this podcast airing? <laughs> oh boy, um, I don't remember. Next month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Then then we should be good. Go. So we're uh, announcing. <laughs> By then, we would have uh, announced uh, an EP release show that we're playing at House of Independence, celebrating uh, this um, this release. But uh, we're looking at like October eighteenth, twentieth, something like that, somewhere in there. Oh no! I heard Blink One Eighty Two is releasing their record October eighteenth, so we might have to be very careful there. Oh, that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true, Andy. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm on the Blink 82 forum, sir. I, I, yeah. I'm telling you, I think it actually. I don't know for sure. Guys. Are, are I'm you not trying serious? To, I, I think so. Like, I mean, I don't know. You know, these are all speculations, but you know, I know they're releasing a song 
what they say the seventh. The seventh, I think tomorrow they're releasing a new song. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll be fine. But, no one yeah, really likes nah, I, I, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, House of Independence is uh, it's uh, in this it's a venue in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and it's like one of the more premier venues, like in jersey and a lot of notable bands have gone through there like sorry so far you know like yeah. tons of other bands um uh and uh yeah we're super excited to uh be co-headlining with our buds and halogens so it's gonna be a lot of fun sounds awesome yeah it's gonna be a great time i'm also excited i didn't know about the blink way two news so i'm excited about uh, i don't know i don't know i this is <laughs> from you know that blink way two italia or whatever that i like that's like the twitter handle or whatever i don't know how true it is i'm just you know i don't want to spill you know i mean this will be <laughs> out, he's out here way. spreading rumors <laughs> i know I'm like, rumors on, on I your know, podcast i'm, I'm, drop, I'm, I'm <laughs> spilling tea right now uh, I don't know. Tom DeLonge might come for me. He might send you know some shit for me, but you know, something like a cease and desist or some shit. You're... He's gonna get anal probed by an alien. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna send his pals the aliens after you. <laughs> I mean, He's if screwed. it gets if if it means that I get to meet Tom DeLonge, I'm fine with it. It's okay. Look, you know, that's fine. That's fine. No, I just his alien, I... not him. Yeah, it's I mean, then it's yeah, fine. Let's... It's from Tom DeLonge. He just wow. comes in, like, in an alien spaceship. No aliens, just Tom in the alien spaceship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Andy, come on, man. What the fuck are you guys what are you doing? Still on tea on the podcast. No. <laughs> have, you yeah. even, like, have you even read any of my books? <laughs> I can't read them. You can't read without reading my books. I know, I really, I was actually trying to, I've, I've watched quite a few interviews with him. I think he was on the Joe... No, was it Joe Rogan or? Yeah, he was on Rogan. Was Steve-o. He was on Rogan. He was, yeah, he, he was on Stevo too. He was with he was yeah. with Stevo. Mm-hmm. That's when I listened to. It's okay. interesting. It's like crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. Speaking of his books, I do have like most. of them. They're great. They're really good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stoked on those. Um, so, Sucker Punch was originally called Nude Shoes. I remember actually having you on our first ever unsigned pop punk playlist back in 2021 the ver- the first ever update oh shit yeah damn I, that was that's, a that's awesome so yeah. i i've been here i've been here how uh how would you say the band has changed since you first started oh man um i guess i'll take that one um yeah take that one andy yeah i mean so the project was like new shoes like it, i had started it and I, um, through our mutual friend who was, uh, tracked, um, who had tracked this current EP coming out and the, the last EP, his name's Pat Reese. Um, he has a studio in Oldbridge and Billy is a friend of Pat's. You guys met in college, if I'm correct, right? Actually, we did, I didn't, we went to the same college at kind of like different times. I met him through a, uh, a college Facebook, uh, like a music Facebook group. And they're like, I was looking for someone to record my shit. I was doing some like under oathy post hardcore stuff. And, um, yeah, I was recording with him and, you know, he was like, hey, I got a buddy who's got like a bunch of shit already set up. If you want to be in a band, I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll, uh, you know, see what it's about. And that guy was Andy. And, yeah. that guy was Andy. and, then, and then he, uh, I remember him, I remember him meeting me, meeting me at my parents' house in Jersey. I was like, yeah, he's pretty cool. And, you know, he became part of the band. And then I think, then Chris, I think you were, you were next, I think, because you, you know, you guys are old friends. So you guys connected. Yeah, right. so Billy and, then, and I have been friends since we were like in middle school. Middle school. Yeah. So we we've been we go way back. We played in like our first like real band together playing shows back like in like what 2012, 2013. Um and I I hadn't played music since like 2014. I'd moved away. We we'd still like stayed in touch, but we were, you know, hadn't really seen each other much over the past couple of years. And then he just hits me up one day. He's like, "Are you uh interested in like playing guitar in a band again?" And I was just like, "Um let me think about it. Send me the stuff. So he sent me some of the stuff. I listened to it. I was like, you know, this is cool. Because I was always in pop punk bands. O- o- like, only kind of bands I was ever in were pop punk bands. So I was like, you know, yeah, let me let me join up. So I actually originally joined the band as a guitar player. Because it was, you know, it was Andy's project. He was the, he was singing at the time. And uh, I slowly just started singing more through, like, you know, doing the harmonies and stuff and doing backups and stuff like that. And then uh, we, what, we shot a video for our song Billy's Here. And that's mm-hmm. when we uh, that's when we had Julio join, who's our screamer and now rhythm guitar player. And it like wasn't long after that where we kind of just we realized the sound was shifting, 
And uh, that's actually what like sparked the rebrand to Sucker Punch. And we just we just knew we wanted to go with a different sound. And um, Andy decided, you know, we, he wanted to step back from vocals, wanted me to sing a little more. So I just stopped, you know, I put the guitar down and we just, you know, we realized it clicked. Like I, when I, I started singing, I've hate saying this too. I've like hate like feeling no, like I mean, cocky or whatever, but it's like, no, you know, he, I started singing more and, you know, I, I've been a front man and, you know, bands before and it just felt so much more natural for everybody. Sure. And, yeah. um, and Andy's a way better guitar player than me anyway. So it's just, it just <laughs> works see, out. But anyway. Chris, Chris is a thousand times better of a singer than I am. So we just, we just kind of, so everything works out. Yeah. Everything works out. Yeah. 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 And then and just kind of, so we're like, Switch. you know, what, let's do it. Let's, so we changed, we changed the sucker punch, you know, got, I got a way more aggressive sound. But I love that we never lost uh, the same like kind of pop sensibility. Yeah, exactly. And and Dan, I get everything we write. I is like Andy is the mastermind behind ninety percent of it. Aside from this, you know, passing that we just put out. This was a big Billy, big big Billy project, and he deserves all the credit <laughs> in the world for this song. But uh, but Andy's songwriting is just insane, and I give I give this dude all the credit in the world. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, we we, I think this last record, um, was definitely like, you know, more collaborative in, you know, a sense, cause a lot of it, um, that's good. at least the final, like things were kind of put together in the studio and such. Um, but, uh, you know, then, um, who was, was it, I think Ju was Julio next or Tyler, Tyler was next. Well, Tyler came out, Tyler and Julio kind of came in at the same time. Yeah, really, yeah, it's kind of the same exact time because uh, we had just our our drummer quit because he didn't. It just wasn't really into it. He was just kind of filling in, and yeah. um, and we needed a drummer for the video. So we're like, "Fuck! Like, what are we gonna do?" And then yeah. uh, Tyler's like, "I'll do it." And then he, you know, it was all around around the same time. Yep. Yeah. And then Will joined later on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, at this point, we've been through like eight members or some shit. You know, it's been nuts. <laughs> Yeah, it's Sucker uh, Punch it's been... though is, is stayed strong. Yeah, yeah. So far, Sucker, Sucker have... Punch has stayed strong. No, yeah. no member. This is like... oh, sorry. New shoes went through like <laughs> yes. Numbers. Yeah. Yes, this is the OG lineup. Man, that's yes. currently still the lineup. If yes. that makes right. sense. Right. Right on. Yeah, I remember, um, like one day, like looking for new shoes. I was like trying to find <laughs> you after, and I was like. They're fucking gone. It's like where they like. I was like, oh, and then I found that you had ch like you know, doing my hardcore journalism, and I uh, mm -hmm. found that you changed your name, and I was like, oh, there we go. Well, they're not gone. I found them, <laughs> but I still have you. Like I have nude shoes on my list of bands, like on my spreadsheet that I oh. started in 2021. That's crazy. Oh, shit. Well, it's funny because, like, crazy. all right, so we played with Anti Flag before uh, they got canceled. And uh, there was a guy there. T I think it was like, was he taking blood or like, take, like, he was, he was like signing people up to like donate blood or some shit. And he yeah, was like an older punk that. guy. And he was, uh, punk, he was like, punk rock saves lives. Yeah, right? that, that's, that's yep. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, and we were talking with him and he was like, oh, like, you guys were playing. I was like, I know this song. He, it, it, Billy's here gets played on some sort of radio station under nude shoes still. And we're like, oh, we should probably do something about that. But I don't know yeah, what to yeah. do, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let, let it exist. Yeah. He's got he was like, like you didn't write that pop. song. That's a nude shoes song. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if we yeah. could sue ourselves for that. I don't know if that, I don't know if that would I'm, work. I'm going to just sue you, dude. <laughs> I mean, all the you can take the twenty three dollars in my bank account. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Garnish my wages. <laughs> that's that's the most punk rock thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> so the East Coast, you know, has a thriving music scene and greatly benefits from so many smaller states in close proximity. What are some of your favorite places to play, and what is the local Jersey scene like? Um. I mean, one I, in Jersey, one of our favorite places to play is uh, Artie's, right? I mean, we could say yeah, Artie's. In, so there's a place in Frenchtown. It's like a bar and grill. We played. We so we played there. Was it three times? Right. Yeah, at, twice at over. Point? Just twice in the past, like three months, that we played like some pretty solid shows there. Yeah, uh, we played um, the Scary Kids. Scary Kids back in um, June. What, was that July or June? June. June. Yeah, June. June. 
And then we just played uh, back again in August with Alisana, which was awesome. Yeah, we and also that, had our e- we all grew up listening to. You know? Yeah, we all so also had our EP cool. release show there uh, last mm-hmm. year. Yep, yep. That's where we released Hope Like Hell. So we we love that place. Um, but honestly, like the scene in Jersey is very spread out, and it's not very like as small as Jersey is. People don't realize this who aren't from Jersey. As small as Jersey is, like everything that like kind of matters is still like two to three hours away from everything else sure. so the scene's very spread out in jersey and it's so i'd say the scene's more philly like a lot of the jersey bands gravitate down towards to philly okay. or um yeah, sure. honestly sure. i wouldn't even say Headphones a lot up. of jersey bands go up to uh into the long island scene um we've played long island a couple times and we love it out there it's super fun um but yes, Jersey, I feel like the Jersey and Philly scene is kind of just a one big melting pot of bands at this point, sure. which um, I came from like the northeastern Pennsylvania scene originally. Okay. So I've been, uh, so it's cool to be back with a lot of familiar faces from like 10 years ago when I first, you know, started playing music and stuff and seeing every, a lot of guys still doing it, you know, and it's a very tight knit group of people now. And I think especially since COVID, everybody here just wants each other to do well. Like it's, it, it doesn't feel so, it's still competitive. Everybody still wants to, you know, sure. do, do the, their thing, but you, I don't, I haven't really played with a band in a very long time that just seemed very just bitter or anything like that. Like everybody's sharing your stuff on Instagram or your TikToks or commenting on your posts. And it's like, it does feel like a very, very good community vibe around here. And I, I love that, man. Like that's, that's what music's all about. Hell yeah. And you um, guys thing to add uh i mean and like since i moved to virginia um we play we played elevation 27 which is a, a really cool spot um in virginia beach um okay. we played with uh which is a connection that you know i guess um, we'll talk about later um but we played with can't swim and oh. the plot and you um in what was that that was your birthday chris right that was yeah, may, may 22nd of, of what was that 21 22 or 22, 22. 20, yeah. may 22nd of, 20, uh, of 2022 yeah and then we played there like like billy said with um before they were canceled uh anti-flag that was october of the same year yeah that was october of the same year yep. so yeah um but that venue's can we just say bc cool yeah <laughs> before canceled <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shit. <BC. laughs> that's gonna be a new thing right now i like it I support it. Did we just start something? Yeah, let's trade. Yeah, I, I, I think you might. <laughs> I, uh, gosh, I, it's been so long since I've been to Jersey. Like, I think the last time I was in, like, I did oh, a warp, one of this? the warp tours I did, I was in, uh, Asbury Park. Ah, I think. Yes. And then, like, the Stone Pony. Mm hmm. So, so that's where we're playing. That's where House of Independence is. It's uh, okay. it's an Asbury, it's an Asbury. Park, which is where I'd say probably the biggest Jersey scene is. You know, sure. it's still Asbury Park. Like that's still where you want to be playing, uh, and it, the shows are always awesome. Like I, I love this venue, and that's that. That's another cool thing. Not even to sidetrack, but it's yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, no, I've been there a million times. It's a great venue. It's very. It's just. It just you know. It feels like that's like you know, that's a big part of the Jersey music scene is that venue. Yeah. So it's it's cool to be playing in that venue. Um, I think the one up from that, like I, where I grew up, is like Starland. That's like the oh, big, Starland's big, sick. Yeah, Starland yeah I mean, that, I, I grew up eight minutes from there. I've seen Coheed there a zillion times. I've seen every band there. Um, yes. From the Ashes, like everyone. And, you know, if to play that venue, you know, after like House of Independence would be a, for me, that would be like, That'd be a dream because, like, I grew when I was in middle school. I was going to the shows there, so that would be that would be pretty sick. But that's like the next, like, that's like the big, big venue without going to an arena kind of thing. Sure, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, of the songs that you've released so far, what song means the most to you? Like, I mean, individually, what songs like mean the most to you, and why? Let's go around. Get we'll deep. really start this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. I think, I think for me, uh, our, our latest single, uh, 
worst case scenario is means the most to me just because i'm i'm the probably the most invested um i i put a bunch of stuff to i like i built a, the set for the music no i mean everyone helped me of course but i did a lot to build the set for the music video uh, I, I wrote the lyrics uh some of the a lot of the vocal uh melodies um and it was just like a really really good chance for me to i don't know i like using my brain i like sitting down yeah. and like uh, uh like really putting myself into something and for me this is probably the most uh it that i've done it um i i think yeah so i mean from that from that angle i think i think worst case ontario for me is is uh you know that's my baby so yeah, i'd probably have to go with that one and did and it's and it came out awesome so you should be yeah. proud for real yeah dog yeah i i fucking i so like the the set for the music video like i built a fucking a frame it was like it was like 12 feet tall by uh eight, i think it was 18 feet both ways i built a frame out of pvc pipe and got it like there's like some crazy big fucking paper that's gonna make the, it, it, it took me I, I probably put like 20 hours into that shit like straight up like built yeah it's fucking dumb awesome. no but it was it was great it was our our best music video by far it was a lot of fun Oh, dude, it was fucking great. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess. Yes. I guess I'll go next. Um, uh, I guess for me, um, I guess uh, it's so it's a be released song. Um, incognito mode. I think for me, definitely. I just I feel like that song, like you know, helping to write it. Um, because I remember. Like writing some, you know, a lot of um, a good portion of the instrumentals and sending it to Billy, and he was like, "Oh shit!" And in my mind, like something clicked. I was like, "This is something different than we've done before." And like, I don't know, it just felt very natural to me. And then when we came up with that break in the studio, like there's like a breakdown, I guess, in the song. For some reason, that, that hit me like very hard, and I was like, "This, I don't know." I just think like that song is like structured really well, and um, I don't know. I'm like really looking forward to that one coming out. Like I think like chris like your performance on it is great and just like everyone's it's just like collectively just like i think a very it's like i don't know it's just a really really solid song it's like taking everything that i like from pop punk and like chuggy like kind of hardcore and just like smushing it together and it like just sounds very cohesive and the energy is like just perfectly balanced in my mind so i'm well, excited yeah. for that one to come out well now i'm excited for it absolutely yeah, we're filming we're filming a video for it too um, so, uh, for Billy's favorite movie, not just Dodgeball, Body, dude. Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Growing the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> you can dodge yeah. a wrench. You can dodge a ball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, Sorry, I was yeah. actually just at a bachelor party last weekend for my buddy. And, uh, it was like in this like giant, they had rented out like this place that was so unnecessary. It was like a mansion. It had like a basketball court and like, we ended up playing dodgeball for like an hour in this freaking <laughs> gym at damn near 30 years old. And, uh, oh, fuck. I, yeah, I paid for it the next day, but it was hilarious because I'm there against the wall and there's, you know, we, we had a couple friends come over the first night. And it wasn't just all dudes. So, like, we had a couple of our girls and, like, my wife and, like, a couple of our friends over. And I'm just in the gym screaming, dodge, duck, dip, dodge, <laughs> dodge. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah. good. It's awesome. But, uh, for, I mean, for me, I'd, uh, probably the next song that we're releasing, uh, I'm Ready to Ride Giants Kunu. Uh, it's just personally, I, I've been – on a, on a journey over the past couple of years, just co consistently trying to just be a better person, you know, trying to be a better friend, a better bandmate, a better husband, a better son, you know, like just, yeah, that, that's been a big focus for me over the past couple of years. And, um, I feel like that's what that's, this song really just, you know, encompasses like you constantly trying to hold yourself back with negative thoughts. is just not the way to go. And, um, sometimes you just gotta, you know scream about and sing about how you're how you're over it and i think that's that's what this song really really speaks to anybody who's been down and you know dealing with with self-doubt and just negative thoughts and you gotta just you know just trying to overcome it and we're all just doing our best so and uh it's it, it hits hits home i feel like a lot of people you know can can relate to that oh yeah i mean everybody's just out there just doing their best mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> 
I'm just trying oh, yeah. to do the best I can every fucking day. It's yeah. Not yeah. Not yeah. always easy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I yeah think, it's definitely I think like our most emotional for sure. Oh, 100, 100%. I, 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 it's, yeah, definitely the most emotional. I, I would almost say like, maybe not most dynamic, but there's it, this one's a lot different than I think everything else on the record. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's definitely we push the envelope on this song, I think, the most out yeah. of anything we've done so far. And it's definitely like, I think, a band favorite. Yeah, um, for, sure. for sure. I mean, I, the feature, we have a pretty cool feature on this one, too. Um, we're, I mean, we could probably talk about this by now, right? The song will be. Yeah, uh, it'll be out yeah. by then. So yeah, oh, exactly. Definitely. So the song will be out. So, you know, we got we got Chris Porto from from Can't Swim to feature yeah. on this song. And we're all super excited about that because they're another Jersey band that we, you know, yeah. we've played with them and, and, you know, share a lot of, you know, same, you know, some of the same fan base down here. And it's, it's really cool just to have him on the song. And we're super excited about that and can't thank him enough for, you know, yeah. being willing to put his name on something, you know, attached to us just, you know, means a lot. So we're super excited about this song. Oh, yeah. We were freaking, we were freaking out a little bit too. Cause like, uh, like around this, uh, earlier on in the recording process so we were talking with him he said yeah he'd do it and then we kind of stopped hearing from him for a little bit and um <laughs> they were going through like a bunch of van trouble so like you know like we're like okay he's probably like just going through it right now like they had uh they're I, 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 he's yeah they had a whole bunch of shit with like van issues they like their van broke down they had to rent a fucking box truck and all this other stuff and you know i was just i sent him a message was like hey man like you know uh, we just got to know if you're doing it or not. If you're not, it's okay. We'll pivot and, uh, uh, you know, we'll, fi we'll figure something out. But he's like, nah, just, just you know, give me some time. I'll get back to you in a sec. And um, he's like, did you got a studio at home or anything? And I was like, yeah. And, like, I, I got to record, like, the feature, like, myself. It was fucking awesome. Like, it's a, a really cool experience. He's a really nice guy. That's awesome. Yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Super Hell cool. Yeah. Well, we've got one more question before we go to a quick break. If you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now that you wish you had known when you were first starting your journey, what would it be? I, for me, I would say make sure you have the people in your band that you want in your band. Because if you don't, if you don't, and that's important, you know, you can, you can write with people and that's cool, but, um, don't, don't, don't jump in so quickly to be in a band with people that you're not confident in going through the hard stuff with. Cause like, you got to have some hard conversations and mm -hmm. it, it's not always easy, you know, and, and you gotta be, you gotta also be friends at the end of the day. Cause if you don't have that love for each other, it's, it's just never going to work out. You know what I mean? And I think that's something where we're, we're all pretty pretty cool with each other and we're you know we're all we're all good buddies and it's the hard conversations aren't that hard at the end of the day you know so for me that's i'd say that's a really big thing yeah i i will i will agree with with chris on that yeah i'll pay like ditto like that's that's it it's uh definitely you know if you're gonna do it do it with people that you that you are going to enjoy it with um you know and then you could be creative with and take chances with and I think that's a, a big thing, and, you know, and like put ideas forth, like, you know, that, you know, may get turned down. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll send the band shit and they'll be like, yeah, this is trash. And I'm like, sick, you know? And then I'll like, Oh, I tell, it. yeah. And I tell fine. Andy yeah. that things are horrible <laughs> regularly. You know? And I'm like, it's fine, you know, but like, you can't really, I think the biggest thing is like, you just can't have an ego. You just gotta like be like, you know, this is, it's part of the process and you know, mm -hmm. like you just keep doing it. I don't know. You just keep writing and keep going with it. And like, mm -hmm. that's it until you all find something that you click on and then you collectively push it and edit it and make it the best that you think this band can make it. And then, you know, you put it out and you hope that the world likes it, you know, as much as you guys do. So that's definitely something for sure. Yeah. I, don't know. I think, I think for me, uh, it's, it's 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 a grind it's it's a fucking grind and it's very very tough and, and painstaking at times but like you really just have to be persistent and keep driving forward um you know like you you know it, unless you're like you know you could be lucky and like pop off with the first like single or two but like you know for the vast majority of people it's not like that and you really have to grind and keep putting stuff out there building your fan base building working on your brand and it just it doesn't come overnight and you really have to, you know, put a lot of work into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well said. I mean, for Frank, sure. 
anybody that thinks that being in a band is like just an easy thing, especially to do for your career. Like if you're trying to make music your career, it is one of the most difficult uh, employment paths you can probably take. <laughs> um, it you it costs a shit ton of money, like crazy amounts of money Insane. all the time. <laughs> all the time <laughs> it's, it's never ending on the text message be like yo you owe me this you owe me that i'm like ah, shit <laughs> and it's and Just... it's not like <laughs> and it's not like a little amount either it's like well we want to record cool you owe you each owe me a thousand dollars like recording in a studio is crazy expensive because you want to go to a place that's gonna do it right um and it doing it right isn't cheap yeah that that's also you know what i would love to put that as a, as a word of advice too in, in this industry honestly you pay for what you get for and um if you if you want to have a good product and a good quality don't cheap out and just go to a guy who's going to record you know you know 150 dollars a song and, and mix and master it for 50 bucks for you and get it gets it back to you in you know a month you know, it's it, it it that is I think a big thing that holds a lot of really talented people back. Mm -hmm. Um so that's really honestly a, a very good point too. Yeah. And I mean there's there's great like things to think about that like are are scary. Like you could spend ten thousand dollars on an album recording your album and nobody could hear it. Yeah. Or it you know, like because you have to spend the money to make money. You're not going to get, you're not going to get a, like a, you're not going to sell a ton of records or get a ton of streams with really low quality recording. It just doesn't work that way, especially not anymore. Yeah. But that's uh, why you have to love it. You know, like yeah. if you don't yeah. love it, because, because the way I see it, like, you know, I have, I'll use my father in law as an example. Shout out Tommy D. Um, he's huge. He just, the guy gets a, a new hobby every, couple of gears, you know, and he's always spending money on his hobbies and people, if, if you're into something, you're going to spend money on it. Yeah. So it's like at this point we're we're lucky enough to be able to be doing something that we consider a hobby that we're mm -hmm. working towards making, to, you know, turning into a career. Um, so, you know, yeah, you're going to have to put a little money into it. You're going to have to put a little, you know, blood, sweat, tears into it, but that's why you got to yeah. love doing it. You know, it's like, an investment in, like an investment in happiness. That's kind of, yeah the way mm -hmm. every every venmo i send is that's an investment in happiness <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah exactly and you know it's if anyone who's trying to be a musician for their career loves it you have to you literally like you have to love this yeah. more than yeah. you love anything basically like it, it's there's just so much that goes into it, it like to do it for your career especially like when you're first starting out and doing all that grind it it takes all of you it takes all of Absolutely. your day and all of your mind like you have to be thinking about it what what's next what more can you do it's, there's just so much that goes into it it's endless for Absolutely. sure yeah. endless and speaking of endless on that note we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with our next segment What's up friends, we're super stoked to tell you that we just partnered with G Fuel. And let me tell you, there is no more pop punk beverage on the market right now than G Fuel. G Fuel keeps you energized, focused, and hydrated. If you go to gfuel.com right now and use code UNSIGNEDPOPPUNK, you're going to save 20% off your entire order. You can get it in the tub form and have 40 freaking servings of flavors like Rick and Morty's Unstable Portal Fluid, which is a delicious strawberry limeade, or get something in the can form like Sonic's Peach Rings or Crash Bandicoot's Wumpa Fruit. Go to gfuel.com and check it out for yourself. Let us know what your favorite flavor is. And once again, don't forget to use our code Unsigned Pop Punk to save 20%. It's a heck of a deal, man. And we're back. Thanks so much for sticking around. Now we're going to hop into our food for thought segment. We've, you know, we've gotten deep. We've reached into each other's souls. Now we're going to find out about your food soul, your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> or as I like to call my heart. 
<laughs> yeah, or your heart. Yeah, yeah. So my first question here is, for any bands coming through New Jersey on tour, what is a must-stop food shop that you would recommend them to go to? Mm. Um, it has to be a pizza place or a diner. Pizza, yeah, but, pizza for sure. Dine. So, yeah, that's the thing. If it's after a show and there's yeah, not a lot of places diner. open, you can't go wrong with a diner that's open. You know, not a lot of places are 24 hours. A good 24-hour diner is awesome, but most of them are open until at least like 2, 3 a.m. now. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm right outside New York city. Uh, the TikTok diner is a staple, yeah. you know, people always passing through right off the highway. Uh, you can't go wrong with TikTok diner. Um, as far as pizza. So That's I'm, I'm like near like the Secaucus area of New Jersey, kind of like around MetLife stadium. So some people, you know, occasionally pass through there. I can't recommend Ralph's pizza in Nutley, New Jersey enough. Um, but I'm also a big fan of ZZia pizza in Bloomfield, New Jersey, which is excellent. Okay. Okay. If you're in central, if you're in central Jersey, definitely go to Crispy Pizza in Old Bridge, or Carlos in Matawan. Those are that's those are where I grew up. And Crispy has a they're from Brooklyn originally, so you know their shit's going to be good. So um, yeah, definitely pizza diner or in the morning some type of bagel place. Oh, like that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna throw a curveball out there and say like if you're ever in the uh... In my neck of the woods, plus a place called Hot Dog Johnny's, man. That, shit is, <laughs> that is true. Hot Dog Johnny's yeah. is a. Dog, it's people, good. It's people good. travel for Hot Dog Johnny's. It Literally. is like it's a. It's I'm pretty sure it's been you know it's been on like Food Network. I'm sure and like sure. all that stuff. Like it's it's a landmark. That is yeah. uh that is one of the better spots for sure. Buttsville, so it's extra funny. That's a good yeah Buttsville. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's a good so, good call on that one. Yeah. Without- my o- my only gripe with them is that they do not they do very basic toppings they don't do like chili or cheese or anything they're just yeah. but uh, but they don't need it i'm just I'm, I'm a chili dog guy so selfishly i like me a chili dog sure yeah, so selfishly i would like that but yeah f- a phenomenal place so <laughs> sponsor us with the, you know not trying to like start any fisty cups or anything like that but you know you guys are throwing out pizza right out the gate New York is known for its pizza. Like, where, where are you guys fighting over it? What's going on? Jersey's better. Um, I mean, it's all the same shit. It's just like you travel across a bridge or some shit. Um, but you know, it's I don't know. I mean, it's all relative. I'd say the bigger Island. story yeah. in, or, or, or argument that we have in, in Jersey about food. Because, you know, there's always going to be the, oh, pizza. If you live in New York, you think New York's got better pizza. If you live in Jersey, you think Jersey's got better pizza. The real New Jersey food beef revolves around pork roll versus Taylor ham. Yeah. Okay. So if, if do, do you know what that is? I don't know if, if you guys. I don't. No. Okay. So it's basically like a Canadian bacon kind of. Okay. But not really. It's way better. Um, but it's phenomenal. And some people call it pork roll. And here in North Jersey, I think North Jersey's the pork roll people and the people in south jersey uh it's called taylor ham so, okay, so that's a that's a big big beef that pe- that will never it'll be a never-ending argument ever yeah i mean it's kind of like a quad versus q-tip sort of thing you know like because technically it's like pork roll but like taylor ham is like one of the brands that like popped off or some shit yeah yeah the product yeah. is pork roll taylor is the brand of pork roll but if so. uh if you if you think it's taylor ham you might be uh, a little dumb I agree. Never trust never yeah. trust a deli in New Jersey that has it listed as Taylor ham, egg, and cheese. You need to get yeah. a pork roll, egg, and cheese, roll, and cheese. on right. whatever kind That's of bagel right. you like. Everything if also, you really know what's good for you. In South Jersey, they call sandwiches, like, well, I, call them, I call them heroes, but they call them hoagies, which is... I call it a sub. Just, I call it a sub, sub, but... We, we call them subs right? up here. No, I call it... Uh, but I'm, my parents are from Brooklyn, so we call it heroes. So I've always grown up calling it heroes. So that's another ridiculous debate. But yeah, I've heard that too. So, I mean, I've heard it called all of them. Uh, you know, heroes, sub, hoagie. I think, I I think, like, like let's be real. Having a beef over something like that's just petty. You know? <laughs> it's, fun. It's, it's fun. It's, it's all fun. for the internet yeah. memes. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's no one really gives a shit. I'm right, you're wrong kind of shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. really, really care, like, oh, my, I'm going to throw my stepdad under the bus right here. My mom's <laughs> husband and his brother are so passionate about this. They, it is insane. I hope he doesn't see this interview, but it is fucking insane. 
<laughs> they like care way too much. Nice. That's funny. Well, so speaking of um, things that are specific to New Jersey, I Googled because I, I, I wanted to find out. So I Googled some New Jersey foods like that you're famous for or that's pr- typically out there. And I, I personally found one that was quite disturbing and I have to ask more about it. But what the fuck is tomato pie? Okay, a tomato pie is actually extremely good. I'll take this because it's a big central Jersey <laughs> thing, like around Trenton. My mom okay. lives 10 minutes outside of Trenton. No, so skinny, skinny, I actually yeah. just house sat for her last week. And okay. it's, 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 it's pizza. It's very, it's the, basically the same thing as pizza. But, um, and I'm, I might even not describe this perfectly because I'm not from that area and it's not a big thing that I have. But um, it's just got more sauce than okay. cheese, than cheese, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but it's just mostly, you know, tomato. You know, but there's that. It's cheesy and it's good pizza, but it's like it's thinner crust. It's not okay. doughy. Um, some people like like a thicker tomato pie, but I just like I like a thin crust tomato pie with little cheese because you know I don't got the best stomach in the world. So uh, yeah, tomato pie. If you're thinking amazing. like apple pie just, with tomatoes, then it's it's that's yeah. not the case at all. You I, know, just, it's, I it's, just really it's I just really pizza. discovered tomato pie. That's not recently. entirely what the image that was next to it looked like. So oh no, it I need looks to know what more it's... like a fucking pie. And I didn't research it more because I was like, I'm just going to ask because mm. I am a little disturbed here. <laughs> I need to, I'm literally Googling it as we speak. Tomato pie. Mm. Mm. I thought yeah, it was like see, a yeah, pie I know, thing. If you look up like Trenton a... tomato pie, that's what a tomato pie looks like. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, it's, I'll it's really just a, a pizza. It's got like Parmesan on it rather than like mozzarella all over the pizza. Sure. Yeah, so it's, it's most awesome. But it's phenomenal. Sauce, yeah. It's actually pheno- phenomenal. It's just all it's just all sauce and tomato. It's like chunky tomatoes. It's oh, good. see, so that's the thing because I don't really like tomatoes. I like tomato like tomato sauce because obviously that it doesn't taste the same. You know, like yeah, well, a lot well it's chunky. It's, it's chunky tomato sauce. Like it's the big. It's sure. it's more. It's not like as smooth as a regular pizza. It doesn't have all the mozzarella. It's just more parmesan and just like thicker thicker tomato sure. sauce but I, I love it and because for, for me that my favorite part of the pizza is the sauce so okay yeah so trenton trenton tomato pies what you gotta go i'll take this. i'll take a look i'll go i'll google that later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got one more food for thought question this one's uh this one that goes a little deeper uh if you could have your own special menu item at any fast food restaurant which restaurant would you choose and what would the food be? I might need a second on this. I, I yeah. know off the top of my head, it because I would re- it's really just something I would like to bring back. Okay. Which would be the quesarito at Taco Bell. Understand. You can't go wrong with the quesarito at Taco Bell. But I feel like I can come up with a better answer, so I'm not going to go with that. Okay. I mean, Taco Bell is always the right answer. <laughs> Right, I think I got something. This is going to be hella controversial, I think. <laughs> but um, maple syrup and pizza is <laughs> my my jam. Go home, dude. Oh, you are home. What are you, elf? <laughs> this dude oh, is dude. elf. <laughs> no, that's that's literally. So when I when I was a kid, um, so, uh, I so my friend. Uh, Matt, shout out Matt Julian. He was over my house for um <laughs> I, I I think there's like Super Bowl parties going on and like I don't give a fuck about football, so we were just hanging out. And Elf was literally on the TV. My mom had ordered us some pizzas and shit like that. And we had some spaghetti, like leftover spaghetti in the fridge. We were literally watching Elf and we did the the spaghetti and syrup thing. I was like, this sucks. And then uh, I was just like all right, let's try this on the pizza that we have. And it was actually fucking delicious. Oh, Dude, okay. sprinkle some garlic powder on that shit, dip it in some apple syrup. You know Don't... what I can see being very good? Have you ever had candied bacon where it's just like syrup yeah. covered bacon, basically? Yeah. Like candied bacon on pizza, like kind of like a sweet dessert pizza. That could be insane. Dog, so I do I'm, see where the sweet and salty you, combo it sounds, could be good. It sounds atrocious, but like if... Yeah, Take the sweet and salty goes together, bro. 
That's what I'm saying. Take some Mansion Mountain out. I can't, like, fight you because I also, like, okay, there's, with, like, frozen, like, shit pizza, like, Jack's pizzas, I actually enjoy putting yellow mustard on it, but only, only those kind of frozen pizzas. That's the (laughs) only, like, it's, it only works with that. So I was a French dressing kid with those pizzas when I was okay. younger. Okay. Because I like I, I will not desecrate an actual like good pizza. Well, like yeah. I won't put ranch or any of that crap on a real pe- on like an actual pizza place. But like if it's like a a school you know cardboard ass pizza from the cafeteria or something like that, I will absolutely dip it in some French dressing. Absolutely. So bad people always thought that was weird. <laughs> Dog, I'm, I'm telling you, the next time you get to, you order like a legitimate pizza. Put some garlic powder on top of it and like just get get a little little just shitty fucking, you know, like it's not Aunt Jemima anymore. It's like cabin something. But get some of that syrup, <laughs> dip it in there and just slide in our DMs and let me know what you think of it. Because it's fucking <laughs> dude, it's it's money. It's good. Quality, oh. quality pizza like Domino's, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm talking like legitimate like Jersey pizza. Like it's 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 good, man. And my, my wife and I, we, I feel guilty sometimes when I order Domino's because I live in Jersey, but my wife and I are big Domino's truthers. I like dude, Domino's. Domino's, good. Is, good I Domino's is good. With the I garlic, like, uh, with the garlic seasoned crust, dude. Can't go wrong. Boo. I might get Domino's. They got the hot and ready. Yeah. I might get Domino's. I, I can't get yeah. Domino's for football Sunday starting. I got to get better pizza, but maybe, maybe yeah. next week. I mean, we've got like lots of good pizza places up here, but like, the only the only problem is is good pizza here costs much more money uh so you know i i can't get like a good pizza place pizza for under twenty dollars but i can get like five domino's pizzas for the same for price twenty dollars <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly you get the three the five 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 deal or whatever yeah get but y'all got the uh you all got the Juicy Lucy, right? Isn't that in that? Yeah, isn't that Juicy Lucy is a uh, a thing up here. Yeah, yeah, that I, yeah, that's, that's good stuff. I might go get a piece of pizza, even though I just ate dinner because I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, uh, I I'm glad to see that I'm not the only one that does fucked up things with pizza. Um, so there's that. I pre I appreciate y'all. And that's what I'm here for. So weird anymore. <laughs> that's what I'm here for to make other people feel more normal. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> cool. Well, we are now on to our rapid fire questions segment. Friendships will be tested. Rapid fire questions. Just gonna speak from the heart. You're gonna shoot from the hip. Like whatever the first answer that pops into your head go with it just go from the heart all right i'm scared you got this mountain dew or Melly yellow mountain, mountain dew not neither <laughs> Boo. Well, horror... that's a reflux nightmare oh shit yeah horror or comedy <laughs> movies or comedy and that's hard for me because uh, i love comedy but i love com- stream is my favorite like franchise com- yeah I, uh i'll say i'll say comedy okay what is the most random item you have within reach right now? Elgato uh, capture card. I don't know what I don't know what this is, but I have a Pokey Walker is. from uh, fucking Heart Gold and Soul Silver. There you go. <laughs> oh, actually, no. Probably this heating pad. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I have a cooler. I, I have a deep uh, deep six pedal that's like there you go. For some reason sitting on there. Or the so, local yeah. school's middle school yearbook. My wife's a teacher. I'm See, not that, weird. I would say that was the most random item right there. <laughs> My I wife's a, a teacher. I'm not weird. Sponge. I promise. <laughs> that's a fucking that gross sponge, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw her a bunch of stuff sometimes, so that's this is what I like kind of cool it off with. Okay. <laughs> No, and then you clean up around like everything with that one, right? No, I just burn it. Okay. Oh, actually, <laughs> I do have a mug from Australia. I guess that's pretty good. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. It's a collector's item. Still in the box. <laughs> Still in the box. <laughs> All right. Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. 
Dude, oh, I, I was That's a question kid growing up, but yeah. like I know Nickelodeon's just has I love both, kids. man. But SpongeBob SquarePants for me is the number is the greatest cartoon ever made. Of all time. SpongeBob no. No. and then uh, number two is South Park, but that's neither of those networks. Hey Arnold but, trumps all of that. But SpongeBob is the greatest. No, fuck off, well, dude, that's also Nickelodeon. Way. So Hey Arnold was legit. That was hundred percent. That was good. Yeah. They tackled like a lot of like rough topics for like kids and shit, but like SpongeBob is like the best cartoon of all fucking time hands. We had a good trio know. for our know. generation. We had SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, and Jimmy Neutron. Which I think were three of the greatest cartoons of all time. Here's all I'm going to say with that, like, because I'm older, I'm a little older, okay. But I liked SpongeBob better when it was Ren and Stimpy. Oh man, Mm. yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch. Well, uh, yeah, Ren and Stimpy was too. I watched. My mom liked Ren and Stimpy a lot, and we and I I watched. I I love Ren and Stimpy, but SpongeBob SpongeBob SquarePants SquarePants is, is just like they were like took a lot of the stuff that Ren and Stimpy did and just made a new story. But did it you know, way they, better. Yeah, way better. I yeah, that's definitely true. don't agree. But I just feel like I just feel like all the supporting characters on SpongeBob are so freaking good. Like they had some episodes that you didn't even see SpongeBob or Patrick or Squidward and they were still amazing episodes. Yeah. But like that's Ren true. and Stimpy was so good you didn't need more characters. Mm. That's fair. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> Tweets their own, right? I'm also a big Rocket Power guy. I loved Rocket Power. Yeah, Rocket Power was good. Again, Nickelodeon. That was that. past past my time. I I did not watch that anymore. Oh man, I like I like Animaniacs a lot. As Animaniacs, a kid. Also Animaniacs that Gargoyles I also loved Kablam. Street Sharks. Did, it, did oh, you guys dude, watch Kablam? Street yeah, Sharks. Like, there Melt, you go. The, yeah, Meltman or whatever. From yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kablam was great. <laughs> Kablam's sure, S tier OG Nickelodeon TV show, and a lot. And if you don't remember it, you're too young to listen to my band. No, just kidding, <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> um, we kind of we kind of went over this a little bit, but thin crust or regular crust pizza? Regular crust, thin crust. I think I'm thin crust. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one is this is probably one of the tougher ones. Lindsay Lohan or Tara Reid. Tara Reed, tough. Mm. Um, on, American I'm gonna, Pie. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna really? say I'm, I'm gonna say all right. I'm gonna say Tara Reed in American Pie two, not one, but two. That's when I Oops. feel like. Can I just the change my answer to like, Jennifer Love Hewitt? One where she wasn't. Oh, in I mean, that's my dream girl. I would. <laughs> Jennifer Love I would, Hewitt like, is my number one. I would, I would jump change, in front of the bus change. for Jennifer. That's Love not Hewitt. an option. Like, I know Tara, Tara Reed's a close though from that from that era of rom com. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Nah, I think I'm going no hand. Can't hardly wait. Oh. oh, we have a song named after Trip McNeely from Can't Hardly Wait. Very oh, minor character movie. in that movie. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Great movie. Love that. Movie. I just recently watched it too. It's oh, it's so good. So it holds up. Oh my god, I remember watching Great. that when I was young because my mom was into all those movies, you know. Yeah. And so, so we'd watch, and it, I remember watching it years later and I was like, I didn't understand half of these jokes when I was yeah. watching this. And I don't know why I was allowed to watch this. <laughs> Dude, I, so good. When I was younger. I had the same pants as the uh, Seth, Seth Green's character. Was <laughs> oh the my big, God. He's the, the, the UFO pants. <laughs> the, the Jinkos. Oh man, they were the best. Oh yeah, they were Jinkos. That's right. That's right. <laughs> good stuff. All right, we have two questions left. Newfound Glory or MXPX? Newfound Glory. Newfound Glory. Glory. Newfound Glory has them. Yeah. I have right. tattoos on them. From them. Yeah, there you 100%. Go. This last one, we're just going to test your jingles knowledge. Can one of you sing us or sing to me the O'Reilly Auto Parts jingle? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> good job you did it i love it <laughs> i'm a big jingle guy actually i told my wife years ago i was like i was fun. like honestly if the band doesn't work out i'm gonna just fucking try and write jingles for small companies and sell them <laughs> Do i like that. the stanley yeah. steamer yeah there's some good ones hell yeah but that's it you guys did it you finished the podcast now's your chance let everybody know what you got going on where they can find you and what is next? Oh boy, um, <laughs> we're releasing uh, an EP coming up. We have a new single coming out. 
it should be out by the time this podcast is out um <laughs> called i'm ready to ride giants kunu we are releasing a uh, an ep called better pleasures in october following in november we are playing house of independence in asbury park new jersey following that we should be doing some midwest uh tour dates so we'll keep you guys updated on that heck yeah we get, hit us up with some socials oh shit uh <laughs> don't forget yeah oh yeah you can find us at uh sucker punch underscore ec at uh on but without the vowels and sucker punch on instagram um everywhere else i think it's just sucker punch right i mean well tiktok as well we don't really post too much on there but uh, we try and be we're trying to be more hip with the with the young kids. Oh, whoops. And uh, yeah, what what's the TikTok? It should just be. Yeah, I opened it up with the same shit. Uh, yeah, no, that was just sucker punch ec underscore ec. I'm sorry with uh, with the vowels. Mm. Oh, okay. There we go. So Instagram no vowels. TikTok with the vowels. Sucker punch underscore ec. There you go. Check us out. Hell yeah! Well, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, Glad we we're all able to make it through, uh, even though, you know, some of us had some you know, technical difficulties. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. No, me too. <laughs> I, I wasn't poking at you. I'm poking at me, too. I'm sitting here on my damn phone. <laughs> oh, me yeah, too. I love, there you go. I love your sweatshirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, kids I just saw him. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Four minute, four minute miles, like one of my favorite records. I... Mine is uh something to write home about. It. Just mm-hmm. fucking love. It. It's so good. The robot on it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, when they had it, I they had it at the show autographed on That's vinyl, and so I picked one of those up. It was awesome. But like I oh, went okay. to the, the they were they were opening for uh, Newfound Glory and All American Rejects, and I mostly. Oh went yeah, to that's right. That's right. See yeah, them. That's in awesome. New yeah. Oh, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Hell yeah! Cool. Well. I am gonna go get some dinner. You need you need your pizza too. So I'm gonna go get pizza, even though I made dinner before this podcast. Okay. My, wife's, my wife's definitely mad at me, but it's fine. There's always room for pizza. I've been holding off on dinner for this podcast, by the way. Mm-hmm. My chicken parm is like right within arm's reach, but I was didn't touch it. And if you're ever in Jersey again, hit us up, and we will get some. We'll take you to for some good Jersey pizza. All right, nice. I love it. All That's right, the rest of you listening you hang out with me i'm gonna hop into the unsigned pop punk news and you'll hear that after this jingle what's up everybody thanks for hanging out and sticking with me and it's time for the unsigned pop punk news as always we want to hear from you join our discord hit us up in the comments whether this is youtube uh you're listening to this on spotify or apple or anywhere you listen to this hit us up and let's let's chat want to hear what what you think want to hear uh any questions you've got, if you know anything about our tonight's guests, let us know. We want we want to know. Let's be friends. It'll be great. Also, 15% of every purchase of our gender equality shirts are donated to the Trevor Project, whose mission is to end suicide among LGBTQ youth. So please help us in supporting this amazing cause and to help supporting uh, and to help Support saving young LGBTQ lives. We got some some new projects coming up that I'm super excited to tell you guys about. Um, I don't think we're there just yet, but we do have a new show coming uh, with me and a really good friend of mine that I cannot freaking wait. It's it's gonna be awesome. I'm super stoked on it. Um, Twitch, we're we're working on getting back to a to a steady schedule. We want to get the super awesome music super awesome music video show back up and running so you guys can get all of your find all of your new favorite bands and all their music videos because it's been a while and we miss you and we miss you on twitch so we're gonna get that going as fast as possible and get that going steady again Um, thanks again to sucker punch for hanging out with me today it was awesome it was a great time um Man, going like I remember New Jersey. <laughs> One of the things I remember about New Jersey um, is uh, I I once um, tried to learn how to to surf in New Jersey. We had a buddy I was on tour with, uh, and then I turned seven, and 
a buddy of ours took us to the ocean. We were going to try and surf and that one of us got our face bashed in <laughs> the, the uh, surfboard went into a big ass wave, flew up into the air, came crashing down and face smashed. Not me, luckily, um, but I did almost stand up once and it was it was a lot of fun, though. It was great. I love the ocean, love swimming and New Jersey. It's a good place. Um, hope to get back there again soon. But yeah, thanks so much to Sucker Punch for hanging out with us today. And thanks to, you know, everybody that helps make Unsigned Pop Punk awesome. Thank you so much to Matt Reed for uh, doing this show with me. Thanks so much to Super Gibby for doing the Twitch stuff and helping out everywhere else. Thanks so much to Ross for keeping the website up and helping us out with everything, all of our website needs. If you need any help with web development, go to Electric Kiwi and tell them we sent you. Uh, thanks so much to Lawrence Crow for always making all of our cool designs, making us look as cool as we ever thought we could be. So thanks so much to Lawrence. For that I want to do uh, some special shout outs this week. I want to thank my buddy Jay Lewis for doing video stuff with me. Been doing video stuff with me for gosh, for like 15 years now. I want to also thank his I want to let's not say his uh Samantha Lewis for all of the freaking help she does um for all of our events and she's been one of our biggest supporters and I can't express how much we appreciate her. I want to thank my freaking wife because she's awesome. And without her, there wouldn't be unsigned pop punk. Let, let's just be honest. I'm going to be honest, very clear, transparent here. Without un, without my wife, I, unsigned pop punk never would have been a thing. I was working in a job I just desperately hated. And, but, and I was working like 70, 80 hours a week. Uh, gosh, like it was, it was exhausting beyond compare. And I, I can't even express how unhappy I was. And, uh, if it wasn't for my wife supporting me and, um, supporting my decision to start doing unsigned pop punk and taking it full time, we wouldn't have, I mean, it's, this started as just a small thing and she believed in me and and my ideas and I cannot thank her enough for believing in me so thanks to everybody who does believe in unsigned pop punk and what we're trying to do um without all of you we wouldn't be here uh and hopefully we can continue to grow and do more that's all I want to do. All I want to do is be able to do more and to get to a point to where that's, that's, this is it. This is all just working to help grow bands and hang out with all of you awesome people every week. So thanks to everybody for listening. If you're still here listening to this part of the podcast, thank you. Share it. Uh, one of the easiest things you can do, share this. Um, if you haven't followed us, this podcast on either YouTube, if you're watching it on YouTube, give us a, a subscribe, like, and subscribe. You know, as if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple, follow that, share it. The more people we can get listening to us and watching every week, the more we can grow. So thanks so much. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Please hit that like, subscribe, or follow button so you never miss an episode. And thank you so much to those of you who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. If you're in the position to help us grow and like behind-the-scenes access and exclusive shows, head on over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsigned pop punk. Let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the show 
and what other content you'd like to see. Thank you all so much.